right, ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? It's Sunday, February 2nd, 2020, and here we are already on our second month of 2020. I can hardly believe that it's been 31 days already. Man, does time ever fly. So today's review is of Acid Baths When the Kite String Pops. Now, Acid Bath was formed back in 1991 in Louisiana, and let me tell you, back in 91, there was nothing like Acid Bath, and in my opinion, there never will be a band like this of this caliber again. Now, the lineup was, of course, Dax Riggs on vocals, the late Audie Pitry, rest in peace, on bass, who was later replaced by Joseph Fontenant following Audie's death. He was tragically killed by a drunk driver. The rest of his family survived, including his brother and parents. So rest in peace to Audie, like I said. Jimmy Kyle on the drums, Mike Sanchez on guitars and vocals, and we have Sammy Pierre duet on guitars and vocals as well. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell for notifications. I'd appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram by searching for Music of Destruction. Join the Facebook group of All Things Metal if you're a podcaster, YouTuber, you have a band, you run a merch store, you run, you manage bands, whatever you are, All Things Metal, come join the group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash music of destruction. If you want to offer your kind support via Patreon and get access to exclusive patron-only content and perks that are not featured here on YouTube, go to patreon.com forward slash music of destruction. The Seed, episode number 17, The History of Black Sabbath, part 1 and 2 are up right now for you guys. Part 3 will be up on February the 21st, 2020, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. I really appreciate the support and thank you very much. Now one thing is absolutely certain here with acid baths when the kite string pops. And there were certainly way ahead of their time and this debut album really showcases some of the darkest and most incredible emotional displays of insanity, rage, violence, drug-induced psychosis, and a trip into the darkest recesses of a nightmare in the mind of a serial killer. That's literally what I hear with When the Kite String Pops from Acid Bath. And yes, I honestly believe that this entire record is both about the artist's own mental fragility and experiences, and of course the mind of the cover John Wayne Gacy, as it's quite clear by the album cover art that a lot of this album's themes and lyrics are rooted in the psychological insanity of John Wayne Gacy himself. Now there's riffs here of deep psychological trauma and nauseating drug-induced states of schizophrenic insanity that emit themselves like a sludged bog of technicolor all over your senses as the music draws you into its fragmented and complete surrealistic portal of damaged mental states, drug abuse, and corrupted viewpoints on all things moral and sane. One can often experience their own mortal terror and a complete lack of sense of reason if you really become absorbed by this record in all of its artistic splendor. There isn't anything on this album that is not completely original and innovative, and you cannot mistake Acid Bath for any other fucking band out there. The opener, The Blue, immediately pulls you into its sickening psychotic world of darkness, violence, and surrealistic psychedelic black textures of madness and depravity that offers you little hope of ever escaping its maddening grasp on your mental sanity. Tranquilized sounds like a trip into the chemical purgatory, coupled with the deep beating of an anxiety-ridden state of both sedation and the side effects of drug usage, regardless if it's for therapeutic reasons or not. It's fast and frantic like a panic attack with no reason for existing, like it just snuck up on you in the middle of the night while you're trapped between waking and sleep. Its hallucinatory riffing and drum patterns evoke a lot of nostalgic drug flashbacks for me personally from my previous experiences with psychedelics, and it's both unsettling and disturbing in its own right. Now, one thing I'm also going to mention here is the way the vocals wrap themselves around the riffs, bass lines, and drumming and really offer up nightmarish images of drug-induced insanity, terror, rage, violence, depravity, sex, drugs, all that crazy shit. And Dax Riggs is a really incredible vocalist, and I love the way that his harmonies blend with the riffs and the lyr and the uh, the drums and everything. You just got to listen to how ethereal that his voice is. It's absolutely surrealistic 
and nightmarish in its own right. No cheap vodka sounds like a drug and rage fest full of super fast punk like violence and confused states of hostility and a sense of deep self loathing that goes par far beyond normal alcohol indulgence. It reminds me of one who is on the verge of a complete mental breakdown, fueled by alcohol abuse and self hatred, with probably some self harm and possible suicidal contemplation thrown into the mix for good measure. This is the most punk so like song on the album. And it still has a deep sense of sorrow and despair emitting from the riffing as well. Now, Finger Paintings of the Insane is just absolutely insane in the literal sense of the word. This is pure hallucinogenic terror in all of the right ways. And it will seep itself deep into your subconscious mind. It's an immaculate track. It really reminds me of a mushroom or acid trip gone horribly wrong with deep states of fear schizophrenia and confusion wailing through the chilling riffing that sounds like voices echoing through the walls and millions of eyes staring down at you once you curl up into a fucking corner just wanting the goddamn nightmare to fucking end panic driven fueled affliction that drives itself deep into your subconscious as it pummels you with its insane delve into psychedelic terror and madness jezebel is fast and frantic very rage-filled brutality here and it's got some sickening violence with a rage that at this time was unheard of in the sludge doom metal genre. I have a feeling that this one is all about a deep-seated rage towards a lover with the strong emotions of betrayal, despair, and suicide. But also the confusion of love itself as being tied to the title of the song, Jezebel, is alluding to describing a woman. Now a Jezebel is basically a sexually promiscuous person, male or female, primarily female, who is bent on destroying everyone and everything with her self-destructive behavior, while also regarding having no regard for anyone, not even herself, and therefore her actions and lifestyle is very reckless and unpredictable. And that's exactly what this song is. It's reckless, unpredictable, fragile, but also brutal and relentless with tales of drug abuse and sexual promiscuity, but obviously someone who had, was the victim of that person's reckless lifestyle and betrayal as well. Scream of the Butterfly. How do I even begin to describe the absolute despair and sorrow and even self-inflicted harm that emits from this track? It's a track about a female either being raped or performing an abo abortion on herself or both, but also falling in love with her assailant, which is otherwise known as Stockholm Syndrome, Twisted lyrics of suicide and self-harm with bloodletting and highways of emptiness really signify deep regret and a strong internal conflict and pain. Another interpretation is perhaps a failed relationship with both parties involved indulging in some kind of sick fantasy and or self-harm after everything falls to pieces, but only after giving it one more shot perhaps. There's so many ways this song can be interpreted and these are just some of my interpretations of what's going on within this track. Dr. Seuss is Dead is a twisted tale of drug abuse and self-inflicted violence from both withdrawal and the pain of addiction with riffs that literally remind you of breaking down mentally and being in a complete dope-ridden haze of despair and sickness with nothing but dirty needles and the stench of foulness in the air with nothing but a prayer for that high that you've been longing for for so fucking long after using heroin with a tolerance that of course develops not that I would know personally, just from what I've read uh, from other people who have abused heroin before. With lyrics like, where the dirty needles shine and litter the floor, it's up too loud. I cut myself again because I'm so fucking bored and it's up too loud. Really signify a sense of mental fragility and drug-induced psychosis. And that's exactly what this song sounds like. This is, like I said before, hallucinogenic terror that obviously has no regard for your goddamn sanity in any sense of the word here. This is one of the standouts on the album as well in my opinion. Dope Fiend is another drug-fueled trip into hell. Only this one is a portrayal into one questioning their actions and drug abuse with also a deep self-examination of how they let their life get so bad to begin with. And the deep sense of regret that emits from drug abuse as well as painful reflection that can only come from drug abuse itself. But it's also about the delusion of pleasure that comes from heroin use and all of its intricacies and cold meat hook realities associated with heroin abuse. An absolute masterpiece of a track here as well. 
Tubabu Kumi is a strange song about blood and sex with some really twisted lyrics about rape and violence and some really cruel and foul deeds being committed here. I honestly think that it's about snapping and literally raping and killing everything, everyone within their grasp and perhaps it's really going on or it's all in someone's mind and they haven't snapped yet, but they're on the verge of snapping if they don't get some reprieve from life and all the dark shit they've gone through. Like I said, this album is a deep trip into madness and depravity and aberrance and it really shows with this album. Twisted and vile and definitely one of the standouts as well. God Machine appears to be about cannibalism and necrophilia with some really sick lyrics depicting these acts and all of the savagery that comes with psychotic behavior and the mental breakdown that would follow someone who has lost all sense of morality and conscience. But isn't that the point? I mean, like I said, Acid Bath were way ahead of their time writing something like When the Kite String Pops. I also think this song is definitely about John Wayne Gacy as well as the rest of the album, but like I said, it's intertwined with the artist's own interpretation and drug-infused states of psychosis and rage. So it's kind of like both the artists and John Wayne Gacy's psychological states intertwined. That's what I'm really getting from this record. And all the sick fantasies that happen on this track are about raping children and eating them. And I really think it's about the mental states that John Wayne Gacy likely experienced on a daily basis. Incredible songwriting and structuring all over this record, guys. The Mortician's Flame is next, and this one seems to be about someone who is hunting for pain and death, perhaps both inside of themselves and perhaps inside of someone else. Almost like it's an existential crisis fueled by drug-induced psychosis that has all sense of reason and the grasp on reality has evaded them long ago, with no rhyme or reason, with nothing but suicidal dystopic thoughts occupying their reasoning faculties. But these faculties are obscured by the drugs and psychosis from perhaps far too much excess and indulgence. Killer song here as well. What Color Is Death is next, and it's all about sex craze, nymphomania, and death, with another drug trip into hell. With a permeating self-affliction and obsession with indulgence and compulsion to destroy oneself and anyone they encounter with their mental toxicity. A complete sense of abandonment and anything resembling stability. It really shows on this track as well. Everything I'm describing here is exactly what's in the riffing, bass and drums and vocals that all illustrate this. And they do such a great job that you cannot help but feel all of this inside of yourself on this album. It's absolutely killer. Now the Bones of Baby Dolls is next and this is my absolute favorite acid bath song of all time. And this one is all about a, hall a hallucinogenic trip into darkness and madness with all sense of reason crumbling around you with an alien world revealing itself to you and you cannot help but enter and embrace its ethereal feeling and overall sense of warmth but also terror that emits from the confused states of your hallucinations and lack of grasp on reality and reason. So guys, let's listen to the Bones of Baby Dolls right here on Music of Destruction.
back and yes what a goddamn track this is man and it just absolutely amazes me and what really stands out about this is it gives me the feeling all the feelings I just talked about sorry as someone who's experienced psychedelics before the things I described here on this album are all too familiar to me Cassie eats cockroaches is the closer on this masterpiece and it's all about someone raping a corpse and doing all kinds of disgusting and depraved things to it and it's pretty disturbing and the entire atmosphere of this album is everything that makes humanity really goddamn scary whether it's drug abuse rape murder insanity aberrance and pure fucking primal states of consciousness one thing is for sure I don't know how many bands can even come close to writing material that is this deep and thought-provoking but also something that really disturbs you and gets under your skin so effectively this album is a fucking masterpiece, ladies and gentlemen. And now we come to the final verdict for Acid Baths when the kite string pops. And I'm going to score this album a 10 out of 10. Time to give some shout outs and thank yous. Shadows of Death Records. Make sure you go to the link below. Check out all the bands that he has recently uh, signed, as well as some older bands that he signed a couple of years ago. Absolutely great material on this guy's label. Thank you very much to Gail and Shadows of Death Records. Big shout out to Sagrado as well for being on the channel. Can't wait to have those guys back at some point. Shout out to Heavy Metal Network's Anthony, Chris, and Mop of Diabolic Intent. Going to be interviewing them, reviewing their newest record, and getting on their podcast at some point this year. So make sure you're patient and look forward to that. Shout outs to Backwoods Metal, Farley's Nerd Cave, King of Swords Acid Metal, and Josh of Mortiside. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Have yourselves an awesome night. Stay fucking metal. We'll see you guys in the next video.